A young black girl was being chased by the villagers, who were holding sticks with fire burning on top of it, chasing the young girl. As she ran, she cried and wished someone could help her. She ran from her village named Masinji village to a nearby village named Mariri village, thinking the people of that village would be kind to hear her out. As she got into the village, it was already late in the evening, some of the people chasing her went back, but two men, named Osoro and Dada kept on chasing her. Her name is Chosiku, she is only 14 years old, she works in the house of one of the richest men in Masinji village, as a personal math teacher to their only daughter Lulu, who is only 9 years old. Chosiku comes from a very poor family, her mother is all she has, and her mother came with her to Masinji village when she was just 7 years old, so she doesn't know her own village or her people. Her mother worked in the villagers' farms, she helps them to cut grasses and clear the bushes in their farms, to be able to provide food for herself, and her only child, Chosiku. While Chosiku, was hired by some parents in the village, as a private math teacher, because she was very good with math. As she ran into Mariri village, she was too tired to keep going, she fell to the ground and started crying for help. Before Dada and Osoro caught up with her, the people of Mariri village came out in mass and gathered around her, asking what was going on. Immediately Osoro and Dada got there, they accused Chosiku of being a witch and they have been chasing her from their village till she ran into Mariri village. The laws of the land in all those neighboring village is that any witch who is caught must be burnt alive. As the villagers heard it, knowing the tradition and rules governing their village, they all ran and brought fire. Chosiku was on the floor crying, she could hardly breathe, from running for so long, she managed to say to them, I am innocent of these accusations, I did nothing wrong, God is my witness, but her words fell on deaf ears. Osoro and Dada asked the people of Mariri village, if they know a well-known rich man from Masinji village, called Mr. Amoni. Some of the villagers said yes, because Mr. Amoni was a very popular man among the small villages in that region, and he is also very rich. They told the people of Mariri, they caught this girl red-handed, trying to bewitch Mr. Amoni's only daughter, Lulu. Chosiku cried as she begged for her life, saying she is not a witch, but the noise from the villagers was so loud, they couldn't hear or even think of listening to her plea. As the villagers were thinking of what to do, a black beautiful SUV arrived and Mr. Amoni came down with his wife Joey. Their daughter Lulu stayed back inside the car, Joey, Mr. Amoni's wife ran to the villagers and shouted, She is a witch. I caught her myself trying to bewitch my daughter. Being a rich and prominent woman, the villagers set Chosiku on fire and watched her burn. Lulu was sitting in the car, watching the whole thing as tears came down her eye. Before you know it, everywhere became dark. All the villagers were gone, a woman dressed in black cloth, her hair covered with a hoodie, in her fifties, came to where Chosiku was burned and chanted some words to her ashes. She packed some of her ashes and went to the river. She was crying and saying, Rise my daughter, take vengeance on those who killed you. You were innocent and you did nothing wrong, as they have accused you and killed you. Rise and take back your pound of flesh. The Great Mother says it will take five years for you to be able to gather yourself and rise, I await your return, rise my daughter, I will be waiting, she poured the ashes into the river and walked away. Five years later, still at the river, very late at night, the river started glowing with blue light, a beautiful young girl came out of the river, her eyes were glowing bright blue light and her hair were long dreadlocks. As she stepped out of the water, Lulu who is now 14 years old was standing near the water, watching her as she came out. She walked up to Lulu who was scared but could not move, and she said to her, you watched me die, 
I am back, I will take from everyone, what they took from me. Lulu was terrified, she could not move her feet, the lady screamed at her, as she raised her hands to grab Lulu. Lulu screamed and woke up. It was all a dream, the whole thing was a dream, she looked terrified, sweat was dripping from her face, as she looked toward the window, it was raining heavily, she was so scared she shouted for her father, and after a while, her father, Mr. Amoni came into her room. He came and sat next to her bed, and asked her, did you have one of your nightmares again? Lulu said yes, I did, but this time, it is real, she is back. Mr. Amoni said, who is back? Lulu said, Chosiku is back, Mr. Amoni started laughing, he said, Chosiku is back. How did you remember about her? Her death was a terrible one, poor girl, she really didn't deserve to die the way she did. Lulu said to her father, why did you allow her to die like that? Mr. Amoni took a deep breath and said, it was your mother Joey, Chosiko was so good to you, I kind of started developing feeling for her, I knew it was wrong because she was only 14 years old, but she was so good to you and very respectful. Your mother Joey found out that I had started developing feeling for her, and she set the poor girl up and hired Osoro and Dada to claim she was a witch, knowing that in our village, witches are burnt alive, just to get the poor girl out of the way. I would have stopped it, but she knew my secrets, and she was threatening to expose me if I got involved, so I kept quiet. It was a sad day and I have lived all these years to regret not saying anything that day, that girl was poor and innocent, and she was the best friend you ever had, I saw how she makes you happy, and your grades were getting better. Lulu said, so mom is the reason Chosiko died, Mr. Amoni said yes my dear, she was. Lulu said, and she still have the guts to leave us and run to marry another man. Mr. Amoni said, my dear Lulu, your mother has her reasons, I regret marrying her, but look at the bright side, she gave me a beautiful daughter who I am very proud of, if that was all I got from her, it is more than enough. Lulu said, but dad, there is trouble, remember after Chosiko was killed, her mother Mama Yuzu came to the village square and said, the spirit of her daughter will return after five years and fight all those who had a hand in her killing. Mr. Amoni said, yes, I remember, but she was only speaking out of anger, I would have also laid a curse if anything happened to my child, but she was only angry. Lulu said, she was not just laying curses, she was speaking the truth, it's been five years since Chosiko died and the dream I just had shows she has returned to take vengeance. Mr. Amoni said, there is nothing like that, go back to bed, I'm sure she was just angry and I don't blame her. She vanished after saying those words, because I looked for her to compensate her but she was nowhere to be found. Lulu said, Dad, trouble is coming, and we need to be careful, she went back to bed. Mr. Amoni covered her daughter Lulu with her sleeping clothes and left her bedroom. He went and sat on his bed that night, thinking, he was shaken by Lulu's statement that Chosiko was back. He remembered how he wanted to stop his wife from telling people Chosiko was a witch and how his wife Joey warned her and said, if you speak for this girl, I will tell the whole village why we left the city, where most of our businesses are, and return to this village. She shouted at him, saying, I will make sure you get arrested for that 16 years old girl you slept with in the city, Mr. Amoni said, but it was consensual. I did not rape her, Joey, Mr. Amoni's wife said, so why did we move from the city? Why did we have to move to this god-forsaken village and live our glamorous life in the city? Because the girl was underage and her family were threatening that they will sue you, before you gave them five million, 
to buy their silence, but we still had to move to this village, and you want to start doing that here again. To expose your weakness to our people and sleep with your own daughter's math teacher. If you dare stop me, I will tell the whole village the kind of man you are, and I will make sure you go to jail and you are banned from this village. Mr. Amoni said, I know I was wrong for looking at Chosiku the way I did, but I am sorry, I will try and control myself, or let us fire her, and get an elderly woman to teach Lulu math. Joey, Mr. Amoni's wife said, I will take care of this myself and my own way. As Mr. Amoni remembered the whole incident, tears came down his eyes, he said, poor girl, she didn't even know I had any crush on her, she died for nothing. And at the end of it all, my wife who claims to be perfect abandoned us for another man and went back to the city. Mr. Amoni said to himself, I really wish I had made a different choice that day, maybe that poor soul would have still been alive, he laid in his bed and went to sleep. It was raining heavily that night in Mariri village. Mr. Akuji, one of the principals in Mariri village was in his sitting room watching television, he stays alone as his wife and kids were outside the country. After a while, he had a knock on the door, he checked the time, it was late, he opened the door to find a very beautiful young lady standing there, she was wet from the rain, he quickly asked her to come in and asked her who are you and what are you doing outside by this time of the night. The lady said, I was traveling to Masinji village but our bus broke down here on our way, and the driver asked we must leave that he will only fix the bus the next day. I didn't want to stay in the bus because it is dangerous to stay there at night, as all the other passengers left, so I asked around and someone directed me to your house, that you are one of the most respected men in this village, so sir, I just need a place to spend the night. I will be on my way tomorrow morning. Then Mr. Akuji said, You are welcome my dear. He showed her a room and she went in and changed from the wet clothes. Then as she came back to the sitting room, he made her a cup of tea. As they sat down in his sitting room, Mr. Akuji asked her, So what is your name and what do you do for a living? The young lady said, I am a teacher. I teach mathematics from any level. That is great, Mr. Akuji said, looking very excited. Then he said, I used to be a math teacher myself, but that was long time ago. I am old now. I am a principal in the biggest primary school in this Maru village. I used to live in the city and when I got old, I asked to be transferred here so I can be closer to my people and give them the last lap of my life. The young lady smiled and said, That is great sir. Mr. Akuji then asked, So what is your name? The young lady smiled and said, My name is Chosiko. Story ends. Watch out for part 2. Moral of this story. In life, don't maltreat people just because you are richer than them, because whatever you put out there in the world, has a way of coming back to you. I remain Uncle Sam. Stay safe.